The 20th century has had its fair share of mysteries. Some of them are still hotly contested today, the disappearance of Amelia Earhart, the identity of D.B. Cooper, the Black Dahlia murder. Others, however, haven't been a talking point in years, perhaps even decades. That's either because they have been long forgotten, or because people are content with the unofficial truth. The story of actress Natalie Wood's mysterious death is well known by this point. On the night of November 28 in 1981, Wood was aboard a boat called the Splendour with her husband, Robert Wagner, co-star Christopher Walken, and ship captain Dennis Davern. The following morning, her bruised body was found 1.6 kilometers away, next to a dinghy. She had a high blood alcohol level, and had taken several medications. The story was that Wood had taken the dinghy out, after a fight with her husband and had fallen overboard. Her death was officially labeled an accidental drowning. While that's common knowledge, many people probably don't know that the Los Angeles County coroner changed the cause of death in 2012 to drowning and other undetermined factors. This was the result of police reopening the case after a 30-year hiatus. Rumors always persisted that Robert Wagner had played some kind of role in his wife's death. The captain of the ship spoke out after decades of silence, claiming that Wood's death was the direct result of a fight with Wagner. Unfortunately, the captain did so in a new book, leading to accusations of his profiting from Wood's death. After the new investigation, the medical examiner concluded that some bruises on Wood's body were likely to have appeared prior to her going in the water, but that it was impossible to say with certainty. Her case is still open. It's been almost 100 years since the five-mast schooner Carol A. Deering ran aground on Diamond Shoals off Cape Hatteras. Commonly referred to as the Graveyard of the Atlantic, Cape Hatteras had seen its fair share of ships sink to Davy Jones's locker. The Deering, however, was completely intact, except that its crew had disappeared. The schooner was spotted on January 31, 1921. However, bad weather made the ship unreachable for four days. When authorities finally were able to inspect it, they found that all crew members had vanished, along with their personal belongings, ship's log, navigation equipment, and two lifeboats. The place where the schooner ran aground, became its final resting place. Due to the Deering being a hazard to other ships, it was scuttled and dynamited. Multiple investigations were launched to determine the fate of the crew. Some believed that it was a simple case of mutiny. Others thought that the ship had been overtaken by rum smugglers coming from the Bahamas. Some thought that the crew had abandoned ship to escape a hurricane. A theory regarding Bolsheviks targeting US ships was popular with anti-communist groups of the time. As the crew was lost somewhat near the Bermuda Triangle, some people offered supernatural explanations. The investigation was closed in 1922 without an official conclusion. Despite exhaustive searching, the crew of the Carol A. Deering was never seen again. Margaret Clement's father started out as a cattle farmer in Scotland, but later made successful mining investments in Australia. By the time he died in 1890, he left his widow and five children a fortune. Margaret spent the first half of her life in luxury. Two of her sisters married, and went their own way. In 1907, Margaret, her sister Jeannie, and their brother Peter bought Tull Airy Mansion, in Gippsland. It was a lavish house but was surrounded by rough terrain, mostly swamp. After Peter married and left in 1912, 
Margaret and Jeannie found out that they lacked the business acumen, and know how to run a farm. By the 1920s, a series of poor choices left the sisters in financial trouble. They became recluses. It wasn't until 1950, when Jeannie died that the public found out just how far the Clomens had fallen. Tulare Mansion was in shambles, it needed repairs, lacked basic amenities, and was surrounded by dense shrubbery. Stories of the strange old lady who spent her time reading mystery novels by a lamp, accompanied only by her dog, Dingo, led to Margaret being nicknamed, the Lady of the Swamp. In 1952, the Lady of the Swamp disappeared. Many suspected her neighbors, Stanley and Esm Livingstone. Others accused Margaret's nephew, Clement Carnegie, whom she had disinherited a while before her disappearance. Some believed that the old lady fell prey to the perils of the swamp. It was also speculated that Margaret committed suicide someplace else, trying to leave behind a great mystery, like the ones in her beloved novels. The Zodiac remains one of the most infamous serial killers in history, primarily because his identity still eludes us. A lot of people became convinced that Arthur Lee Allen was the Zodiac. Others, however, feel that there are several pieces of evidence working against Allen as the killer. He didn't resemble the sketch, his handwriting didn't match that of the letters sent to taunt police and his DNA didn't match the partial DNA profile obtained from the envelopes. Almost four decades old, the case had been labeled inactive for a while, before being officially reopened sometime around 2007. Over the last decade, investigators looked into a handful of new suspects. Three men came forward, claiming their fathers were the Zodiac Killer. Among them was retired detective Steve Hodel, who had previously argued that his father, George Hill Hodel Jr., was responsible for the Black Dahlia murder. Two other men claimed that they received confessions regarding the Zodiac killings. One of them was a lawyer, named Robert Tarbox, who said a sailor walked into his office during the 1970s, and confessed to being the Zodiac. Tarbox kept the secret for 30 years, due to confidentiality agreements. The other man, Randy Kenny, claimed that his friend, Louis Myers, confessed to being the Zodiac on his deathbed. One final suspect was offered by retired Highway Patrol Officer Lyndon Lafferty. He is part of a group of retired officers turned amateur sleuths, called the Mandama Seven. They identified Zodiac as a former real estate agent living in Fairfield, California, who died in 2012. The group presented him under the pseudonym George Russell Tucker. The Mandama 7 claimed that there was a conspiracy behind the investigation. Tucker's wife was having an affair with the judge, who diverted investigators' attention. On the morning of December 12, in 1910, 24-year-old New York socialite Dorothy Arnold went out shopping. She roamed Fifth Avenue for a bit before running into a friend named Gladys King. Upon leaving, King noted that Arnold planned to walk through Central Park. King was the last person to see Dorothy Arnold. By that evening, the Arnold family realized something was wrong. They turned for help to their lawyer, John Keith, trying to keep the matter private. Keith advised them to hire Pinkerton detectives, to look into Dorothy's disappearance discreetly. Investigators checked out Arnold's usual spots. They also visited local hospitals, jails, morgues, and even insane asylums but found no trace of her. Detectives also considered the possibility that she had eloped, with a secret lover to Europe, Pinkerton detectives went overseas, but found nothing. The Arnolds knew, and disapproved of, Dorothy's lover, 
George Griscom Jr. He was vacationing with his family in Florence, when Dorothy disappeared. The Arnolds went to see him but found no trace of their daughter. Reluctantly, after six weeks with no leads, the family alerted the police. Even more reluctantly, they agreed to tell the public, and offer a $1,000 reward. Two ransom notes were dismissed as hoaxes. So was a postcard signed by Dorothy. Some believed that she had committed suicide, either because of her forbidden affair with Griscom, or her failed writing career. Her father thought that she had been killed in Central Park, and dumped in the water reservoir. A convict claimed, that he was paid to get rid of a body matching Arnold's description. One popular theory opined that Dorothy had died getting an illegal abortion, and her body had been cremated. There were plenty of tips regarding Arnold's disappearance, but none of them panned out.